back with Patrick Duffy from Sunstone Metals this morning. Patrick, morning. Hi, Andrew. Nice to see you again. Well, you've put out a an MRE and uh, exploration target for El Palmar this morning. I think you summed it up nicely on your LinkedIn. Uh, it's big. Tell us more about the MRE. No, that's right. So the, the resource is, is just the beginning. It's a 1.2 million ounce resource. Uh, it's pit constrained at surface. Uh, it's had 15, 16,000 metres of drilling, so a small amount of drilling, but open everywhere and, and as expir- exploration target highlights, there's enormous potential there. And this MRE, it's based solely on the, the T1 deposit. Yeah, that's right. So we have five targets. Uh, the T1 is just the first deposit. Uh, there, there's three targets included within the exploration target and still a further two outside that. And you say significant open pit potential initially. Yeah, so it's a huge advantage that El Palma has. Um, other deposits we see in the region are deep underground. Uh, we're able to start El Palma as a large open pit before um, continuing to do the exploration development of the deeper opportunities. But to be able to get into ca- get cash flow uh, operating and, and build, build up a massive uh, gold and copper mine is, is a fantastic um, strategy to have. And, and tell us more, Patrick, about the uh, this sizable exploration target and what it's yeah. based on. Yeah, exactly. So it's 15 million to 45 million uh, ounces of gold equivalent, uh, gold, copper, silver, uh, obviously huge deposit. They don't exist in Australia anymore. So the comparable scale and quality of assets in Australia would be Cadia, uh, Newmont and Boddington in Western Australia. So yeah, uh, standing opportunity. Uh, it's, each target has had drilling in, uh, into these areas. So there is um, a basis for, for the targets that have been set and the ranges that have been applied. Uh, we have a world-class, um, some of the best ex- uh, all three geologists in the company, in the world, with Malcolm and, and Bruce, and uh, 40 years of experience, each of them, and, and some amazing discoveries throughout their career. And this is just another um, feather in their cap. And so clearly these, these form a nice foundation here as far as those talks with strategic partners. How are they yeah, going? that's right. We're, we've been transparent. We are in discussions with various parties. Obviously, a huge gold copper story like this um, is very attractive uh, to the majors. It's uh, in the backdrop, backdrop of record gold prices, and the fundamentals are, of, for copper have never been so strong. So people, companies are looking for these multi-decade mines, um, significant copper credits. It's uh, are very appealing to a lot of players. And I think you're on the same belt here as, is it Sol Gold's deposits? Yeah, no, there's, there's two major deposits within our region. Next door is um, a project called Luri Magua, owned by Cadelco, a huge billion tonne system, copper system. And Sol Gold, um, I think people in Australia would recognise that name, but a major gold, uh, copper gold deposit owned by Sol Gold at Cascabel. Uh, again, uh, the team were involved in the initial discovery at uh, Sol Gold, uh, Bruce and Melbourne. And, uh, and they see the same traits and geological uh, events and, and characteristics at, at El Palma. So, Patrick, what are, your, what are your next milestones? What are you working on? Yeah, so um, there's still some news flow coming through from exploration activities at Bramaderos. Uh, but, uh, yeah, focus right now is, is really trying to uh, accelerate and advance these discussions that we're having with other parties. Uh, they can see the potential of El Palma and Bramaderos and... and we see that as a key to being able to unlock the full value that we have at these huge projects. Yeah, great to see you. Patrick, thanks for your time. Thanks very much, Andrew.